Tunisia. Um, this one country, all right, it, it, that's where the Arab Spring began, as we know, as the Jasmine Revolution, okay? So before, it was characterized as a dictatorship, of, of course. So according to the Freedom House, look at that, 2000, before the Arab Spring, not democratic, not free, red, red, bad, okay? And then, of course, Jasmine Revolution, the scores have improved to part, partly free. Then it got even better, all green light going on, you know, looking really good for Tunisia, right? According to the Freedom House, democracy is triumphing. Yet, look at that. The people in Tunisia are miserable. They hate it. As the Freedom House numbers show improvements, significant improvements, the people of Tunisia are suffering. Their views are opposite. You know, what is going on here, right? Now, this is from Pew Research, and they stopped collecting data at 2016. Uh, I don't know why, maybe it's just too embarrassing. Uh, but my guess is after two, 20, 2016, according to what we, I read in news reports, it's gotten even much worse. So I drew two red lines to show my guesses, okay? It's, it's been going down precipitously, and now we have a new regime. In this guy, I forget his name. Um, so. I'm not predicting whether this new guy is gonna succeed or fail, okay? I'm just saying there's a big change uh, because it hasn't, it's, it's been so, so bad. Uh, and, and of course, as you know, Tunisia was where Arab Spring began and was built as the shining example of the Arab Spring and then later the only success story of the Arab Spring. Okay, so this is, this is Tunisia. Um, so it's very confusing, right? What is going on here? I mean, why are all the data and, and the facts are so, so confusing? What is going on with democracy? So I went and studied the methodologies that are being used by Freedom House and VDAM and those institu institutions when they evaluate democracies. And I found something very interesting. They measure, they only measure a particular set of institutional procedures, okay? And these procedures strikes me as very specific to liberal politics and liberal societies. Okay, certain kind of elections, freedom of press, you know, just, just liberal values, okay. So, so it seems to me that the, the, the disconnect is maybe they're measuring liberalism, not democracy. So they're measuring one kind of democracy called liberal democracy. And at that, they're only measuring the liberal part. Uh, my hypothesis is, now is it possible? Is it possible? The problem today is liberal regimes are failing democracy. Because like as liberal societies led democratic progress in the world for some time. Okay, and we gotta credit liberal societies for that. But now liberalism is failing democracy. So, I want to venture a solution too. <laughs> um, we can't just measure procedures. Okay, if you look at these uh, uh, VDAM and Freedom House, they only measure procedures. The one thing they never measure is outcome or result. Okay, you know, consider measuring outcomes. Is the system delivering democratic outcomes? Democracies normative end must be to deliver satisfaction to a vast majority of the people over long duration, right? Otherwise, what are we in it for? Um, you know, what good is a set of procedures if it results in undemocratic outcomes? Now, what's good is an election if, if elections keep producing incompetent leaders? What is good, what's good about judicial independence if it protects only the rich. What's so great about freedom of the press or freedom of speech if it leads to division and dysfunction in societies? So I think we ought to measure, we should venture, we should explore, we should have at least a dialogue, a discourse around the world about how to measure democracy by outcomes. Are the people satisfied with how they're governed? Are they optimistic about the future? Is your society cohesive? Are you better off than before? 
Is your country investing enough for future generations? Or are they just spending future generations' money?